Hello, my name is Sister Elizabeth Miles. I'm a religious sister from the congregation Servants of Mary, Ministers to the Sick. And today I just wanted to share with you my story. Born and raised in California and in the Catholic faith, I had some things happen to me as a child. My reaction was low self-esteem. Went through catechism up to confirmation in the Catholic faith. But shortly after that, I fell into the thinking that, well, I don't need to go to church. God is everywhere. He's in, at home. He's wherever I am, so I don't need to go to church. Well, really, I wasn't praying anywhere. But that's, what, that's what I was trying to say. And it's not that I didn't believe in God or love God. It's that I didn't believe I deserved his love. So that's where I was emotionally as a child. Even though I wasn't going to church, I would stop by a little Catholic gift shop called Casa St. Francis. And I would buy holy cards of the footprint saint uh, that you usually see with the image on the beach with footprints in the sand. And what touched me about that saying is when it says, Lord, why when I needed you most do I see one set of footprints? And the Lord replied, it's when you see one set of footprints that I carry you. So that had a lot of meaning for me. So I would give those holy cards out to people that I met who were going through difficulties and struggles in their lives. I had everything the world said was important. Uh, my own place to live, a car, a job, a boyfriend, everything. But I still felt empty. And it wasn't until I turned 30 years old and I looked at my life and said, what am I doing with my life? And the boyfriend at that time, I talked to him and I said, you know, either we get married or let's stop wasting each other's time. And he didn't want to get married. <laughs> it's not that, no, I'm not, marriage is a sacrament, it's beautiful, but it wasn't my vocation. So thanks be to God that I, he didn't say yes wasn't my vocation and it wouldn't have been a good situation. So I went on with my life. And shortly after that, I went by the little Catholic gift shop. And the owner, Ruth, was at the counter talking to a customer about the Catholic faith. And in my ignorance, I said, they say that Catholic services are boring and that we don't read the Bible. And I remember Ruth looking up at me with tears in her eyes and she said, what? And she proceeded to explain to me about the mass, the holy sacrifice of the mass, how scripture is read at every mass. It's in the prayers and the liturgy. Um, Father, when he speaks in the homily, he, he explains the scripture. And then she proceeded to explain to me about Jesus being in the Holy Eucharist. I was 30 years old, and I didn't know. 30 years old, confirmed in the Catholic faith, and I didn't know. Now, is it because as a child I had some problems, or is it because of bad catechesis? I'm not sure, but all I can say is I did not know my faith. So she proceeded to say, well, there's a church down the street, and the priests are in the confessional every day. Why don't you go and speak to one? And so I did. I have no memory of my confession of coming back to the church. I have no memory of which priest it was. Um, I just know it was like God was saying, okay, you've wasted enough time, let's get going. So um, it just worked out where my work schedule fit, where I can go in the morning for, for mass, so I started really right away, daily mass, uh, praying with the priests and the lay people, the divine office. I started that and the rosary. And soon after that, I was invited to be a Eucharistic minister to the sick. And one of the priests once said, when do you feel closest to God? And I knew it was when I was with the sick. So I also volunteered visiting the sick. All I can say is that it was my priest. 
It was the priests at my parish. It was their joy and dedication that caught my attention. And it made me want to know about religious life. I had no knowledge of religious sisters and I didn't go to Catholic school. But when I looked in their eyes, I saw something that I wanted. So I went back to Ruth and she gave me a Catholic directory of men and women religious communities in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And I took it home. She goes, take it home, ask some questions. So I did, took it home, I opened it up. And the first name I saw was Servants of Mary Ministers of the Sick. And like I already mentioned, I felt close to God when I was with the sick. So I called them, I called some others too, but when I met the Servants of Mary in Los Angeles, I had that same feeling they have something that I want. You know, the priests at my parish, like I said, they were the first ones. It was their examples. They taught me that Jesus wasn't just a story in a book. He was alive and he loved me. And that no matter what sins I had committed, nothing is greater than his love and mercy. And they taught me that. Uh, they are from religious priests also. So they're from the Oblates of the Virgin Mary. Uh, the parish is St. Peter Chanel in Hawaiian Gardens, California. So I wanted what they had. I met my sisters. I wanted what they had. And I followed it. Now, was I 100% sure about my vocation? No. But I knew I didn't want to be an old woman looking back on my life and saying, was God calling me and I didn't answer? Well, I entered on October 7th, Our Lady of the Rosary in the year 2000. I made my final vows to God on October 12th, 2009. Um, in our country here in the United States, they don't celebrate Our Lady of Pilar, but, but in the Latin countries. So it was another feast of Our Lady. Um, my religious name is Elizabeth, and it means so much to me because like Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, in the visitation, she said, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And those are my words, too. Our Blessed Mother protected me and guided me through all those years, leading me to her son. And so, all I can say is that the only way to truly experience the fullness of joy possible in this life and give the greatest glory to God is by finding what God has, has called you to, is calling you to, or created you for. Um, so God and his great love and mercy, uh, I'm so grateful. And I just ask you for your prayers for me as I live out my vocation as a consecrated religious servant of Mary, minister to the sick, that I be faithful until my death. And be assured that I'm praying for all of you and in a special way for those of you who are discerning, still trying to figure out where God is leading you. Just be open. Be open and ask our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph to guide you into where that is. Where is God leading you? And they will. So God bless you. And like I said, thank you. Pray for me and I thank you for your prayers.